Welcome back to this workshop on fire guards. This is the third and I hope final video in the series for the fire guards. <laughs> By now you should be able to look at the uh, fire guard in the background and see that it's clearly too narrow. The plots that we're burning here were established years ago and um, were made when we just had smaller fire guards. During our time we started looking at why we had jumps and where those jumps occurred and it turns out the bulk of these jumps occur very close to the initial ignition point and don't jump very far. That is, if you doubled or tripled the width of your fire guard, you could probably contain most of the jumps, and it turns out that's, that's worked really well for us. So in this last video, we want to cover a technique um, that's really not used that often, but it can be effective depending on your management needs, and that is black lining or blacking the fire guard. And essentially what you're doing is going into a fire guard and burning it days or weeks before you do the main body of the burn. So on this particular burn day, the green fire guards would now be burned black. That's essentially like disking in terms of it just doesn't burn after you've burned it. There's some problems that are associated with that and we'll discuss those problems here in this next set of slides. So here the crew is starting to black line the fire guard. This fire guard happens to be loaded with brush and so it's sort of killing the brush too which also makes it dangerous. But the far crew is working to the left, the near crew is already out of, out of view, and they're just going to walk this along and, and put this out. In terms of resources, you really need an entire crew. One of the mistakes people make when they do this is they treat this as, well, it's just a fire guard, it's a small area to burn, we don't have to have the full crew. Jumps are going to happen, and the closer you are to the fire, the more likely the jumps are going to occur, the closer your unburned fuel is to that fire. Well, a fire guard's nothing but fire right next to unburned fuel. So you really need the whole crew, and people generally don't bring the whole crew, and the whole crew, crew isn't prepared. Here's a shot of the fire guard that they mowed so that we could burn the fire guard. That fire guard's nice, rake short, way too small. This next shot um, is looking back at our crew, and if you look at our crew, they're not really wearing safety gear. Uh, again, well, we're just burning a fire guard. Here's a crew in a, uh, that was assigned to the, the clockwise part of the burn, and they knew they were going to be in the ditch. They knew they were going to be on that dirt, and so they didn't wear even long sleeves. That's There's a lot of reasons that's wrong, but when the jump happens, when that occurs, this crew's not going to be able to respond. So the biggest danger about blacklining fire guards is that simply people don't come prepared. They don't come prepared as if this is going to be a normal full-blown burn. If you commit that resource, that much resource to doing a, uh, a fire guard, then you may as well burn the whole thing. The, the fire guard blacklining very rarely, in my opinion, pays off. And here on this exact same day is a, a clip of the Rural County Fire Department coming out and shutting our fire down after we had a jump because of all the situations that, we, that I've just covered. So I'm not a fan of blacklining. It requires an enormous amount of resources for very little gain. Uh, prepping your fire guard ahead of time in different ways can allow your whole crew to show up and utilize a burn day more productively than just blacklining. But there are times that it really is an efficient way to get done what you need to get done. If you want to see a crew blacklining correctly, click on this link. This particular crew is doing it in part for training, but in part they're actually blacklining. Look at the, the equipment and resources they brought to bear for just doing a fire guard. That is basically the entire crew you'd need to do a burn normally. And if you're going to bring all that crew together, you may as well do the burn. There's some times where blacklining is good um, and helpful, and other times it's, it's probably not particularly helpful. Well, that brings to an end our three-part series on fire guards. I might end up adding a few more videos later on, but that really covers um, the basics and, and pretty in-depth the ideas behind why we put fire guards in and how we design them. If you're looking at starting a, a prescribed burn program, the best tool for learning is, to, is on the job, to be out there and be doing it. So find people in your area who are burning and burn with them. If, if burning is something you already do, I also can't stress enough that we need to treat this like flight time. You need to keep your hours up. So even though you have experience burning, it's a really good idea to, to take deliberate action and take time out of your schedule to continue burning uh, more than once or twice a year. That just keeps it on your mind and keeps you fresh. 
This has been a presentation of the Doan College Prescribed Burn Program.